Hi, I'm Simon. Welcome to Watercolour Wildlife. In this lesson, I want to go through why I think this Daniel Smith um, Watercolour Essential Set is the best set to buy if you're just starting out in watercolours, or even if you've been doing watercolours for a little while. Um, it will really help you understand uh, colour theory a bit better and also help you build your palette. And I think if you start with these, uh, you're going to be in a good place. So let's get into it. Okay, so I think the first thing you need to know about this set is um, why they've chosen to give you two primary, uh, two colours of each primary, or two versions of each primary. So you've got two yellows, two reds, and two blues, and this is called a split primary palette. And what they're trying to do there, or what they've done very well there, is to choose a, a blue that is warm and a blue that is cool, and a red that is warm and a red that is cool, and a yellow that is warm and a yellow that is cool. And once we look at why that's so important, you'll see why this set um, is so great. And I think the, the colors that they've chosen, they work really well together. You know, there's a lot of thinking that's gone into the selection of the colors that they put into this palette. So I've done some other videos on this. Um, I've done a, a kind of 10 minute color theory one. So go and watch that one. That's where I've produced this. Um, and I've also done one on laying out your palette where I use this set. And again, it's just gonna help clarify color theory in your head. But I'm gonna show you here quickly. I need to kind of feel like I need a brush to point. Um, this is what you want to do. So I've got I've got my color wheel here, and when you're when you're mixing uh, secondary colors, so you're from your primaries, you're looking to mix an orange, a purple, um, and a green. You know I've got orange, purple, and green in between these two, and in order for you to get the most vibrant colors um, in those secondary sets, what you want to do is mix colors that are close together on the on the color wheel. So I've got my color wheel here. If I put red at the top there, um, actually, maybe I'll put it on my, I don't know, I can do it on either. That's what's so great about these palettes, actually, is that they're, um, they're round like this. They work really well with a colour wheel. Um, and again, I've done a, a video on, on laying out your palette. So you see here when I've put my colour wheel uh, in place here, that the yellow that they've given me, which is this, I think it's a, that's a new gamboge and that's a Hansa yellow light. And those two colors, that's a very orange yellow. So that forms, I mean, it is almost orange, I would have said. So that's a very warm yellow and this is a very cool yellow. Um, and you, so you've got those, you're actually missing the, the kind of center yellow, I suppose. And that would be a cadmium or something like that. But the same with the reds, you see that they've given you uh, this red, which is a pyrrole scarlet, and that that falls very close to the orange side of the red. And this one, quinacridone rose, falls very close to the violet, you know, the, the blue end of this, the violet side. Same with the blues. So you've got a warm a warm blue that's, that's closer to the red, you know, it's got much more red in it, so it's much closer to the violet. And this one, um, is a thallo blue and it's much closer to the green. And why that's important is when you're mixing secondary colors, you wanna try and use colors that are close together on the color wheel. So if I grab this color wheel, by mixing here, you see I've done it. So I've got my cool red here. That's my cool, cool red, warm red, warm yellow, cool yellow, warm blue, and cool blue and those those colors so if I want to mix a green I want to mix the colors that are close together on the color wheel you know by mixing this Hansa yellow and this thallo blue I'm going to get this lovely green color and I've done an example here where you can see where I've mixed a, a cool yellow with a warm blue so that's mixing the Hansa yellow and the ultramarine and you see I get a much more muted um, color green and that might be what you're after. So this is not saying it's wrong, but if you want a vibrant secondary color, then 
you know, mixing colours that are close together on the colour wheel are really going to help to improve the vibrancy of those colours. And again, with the orange, to get the most vibrant orange, I want to mix the, color, the, the yellow and the red that are closest together on the colour wheel. And that's this one, this pyrrole red and this new gamboge. And here it is, it gives me a really lovely, vibrant range of oranges. And here again, I've mixed a, a cool yellow and a warm red. So instead of using this yellow, I've used this yellow and you get a much more muted kind of orange. Um, again, with the purples, so here's my muted purple. So I've mixed this warm red. So instead of mixing this color and you know these colors together, I've mixed the pyrrole red, so the warm red and the warm blue. And you see I get a bit of a much more muted purple than over here. Much more kind of vibrant purple, violet, you know, lovely transitions here. So once you understand that, this set starts to make a lot more sense. Um, and you'll see why th they've chosen those colors. And especially if you lay them out on a circular palette like I have over here, you know, it really starts to make sense. Um, and you can go, okay, I want to mix a purple. Well, I'm going to use these colors that are closer together on my color wheel. You don't even have to know the name of them at this point. You know, you just know, I want to mix this one with this one to make the brightest orange I can. Um, and Daniel Smith actually do a, a primary set. So just the three colors. And I don't think that's the best way to start. You know, you'd basically get colors that are in between here. You actually get an ultramarine. Um, you get a pyrrolein red, which would go there. And you get a Hansa yellow. Uh, medium. So it's a slightly darker shade than the Hansa Yellow Light, so it would fall there. Um, and you're just not going to get the, the broad range of colours from that set. Uh, it also tends to come in 15mm tubes rather than 5mm tubes. So actually what you get is three bigger tubes rather than six smaller tubes. I would much, I would recommend going and get six smaller tubes. You've got much, much broader gamut of colours uh, that you can work with and it will really help you nail down color theory and just get it in your head. Um, so yeah, Daniel Smith, uh, watercolor essential set. I can't recommend this enough um, if you're just starting out. And also I've just, you know, I've bought a set. I've got this lot, <laughs> you know, the, this is my paint set and I've been building it up for years. I never went out and bought um, this set essentially I don't think Daniel Smith existed even, or th th this set certainly didn't exist um, when I started painting and I just started buying colours, you know, kind of, oh, I need a blue, I need, you know, and I had no understanding of where they fell on the colour spectrum. So I've gone and bought this set and I'm going to be using it a lot in the tutorials on watercolour wildlife uh, just to help you nail down the colours. And also, you know, how to add to your colors. What this helps you do is decide, this set decides, okay, where am I missing a color in my color palette? Let's put that back. So you can see straight away when you've laid it out on your palette like this, that, okay, if I'm gonna add a color, you know, I might want secondaries. I've, I've got my own range of secondaries. You know, I've got oranges and purples uh, and greens just in tubes. I try and mix them if I can, especially greens, but, um, yeah, if I wanted to add a color, you know, I know that it needs to fall somewhere else in this palette. There's no point in me going and buying another warm yellow or another cool yellow. You know, I want something that's falling outside of that range and it will really just help you build your color palette uh, in, a, in a logical way, I suppose, in a way that's easy for you to understand. So I hope you've got some value out of this video. Um, give us a thumbs up if you're watching it on YouTube and subscribe to the channel. And I hope I'll see you in the next one.